Welcome yogis, I'm Avani of the Karibia Yoga Academy. Hope you enjoy this mini yin practice for liver and gallbladder. For today, you'll need a bolster or a pillow that you've got at home, at least one blanket folded, and two blocks if you've got them handy. Otherwise, books can work. So let's begin. On this first pose, some padding or cushion for the knees will be really handy. So go ahead and give your blanket an unfold or two and take it the long way on your mat. I like to turn this way so I have a little bit of extra cushion. Then take your knees out as wide as you can. Touch your big toes together behind you for tadpole in the lower body. And we'll take a twisted variation. So on this first one, you can walk both your hands all the way over towards your right. And we'll settle in for two minutes on each side. And so the liver and gallbladder meridians are a pair or a set, one yin, one yang and they are connected to the element of wood in your body and all these movements that get to the side bodies or the spaces between the ribs are going to really help to activate the gallbladder line in your system drop down into your breath find sacred stillness and breathe and if you're not feeling enough sensation on the inseam of your thigh or hip then you can wiggle your knees out a little bit wider keep your big toes touching behind you this is going to help you activate or enliven the liver line that runs along inner thigh and inseam of your leg as opposed to its paired or partnered line of the gallbladder that runs along the outside line of your leg hip and thigh we have just about one more minute in this first shape. Smooth your breath. The first pose or two of a yin practice. Any yin practice can be challenging to settle your mind as your body comes towards stillness. So offer yourself gentleness and compassion. This pair of lines is connected with the emotion of anger, particularly the liver. So pay special attention to any sensation of anger that might want to bubble up from within that is self-directed and see if you can soften take three more full breaths If the cushion under your knees and the position of your lower body is still comfortable, start to walk your hands really slowly towards center. You might even take a breath or two there. And then make your way all the way across to the opposite side. Guide your upper body down. This time looking for sensation or edge up the right side of your body, opening lots of space between your ribs as well as inner line or inseam of your hips and thighs. So we're really getting very effectively both gallbladder and liver lines here. Move into your breath and see if you can settle into a space where stillness feels available. And then breathe. So we have just over a minute and a half left here. Settle in, soften down. This is sort of a softer variation of yin yoga's frog pose, but certainly if you wanted to try this out in your own practice with frog in the lower body, that could be a possibility. And you're always welcome to extend the holds. We do just two minutes per side in this asymmetrical variation. You could do up to three or four minutes per side if that feels safe in your body. Just about one minute to go. your breath, allow your 
mind to anchor itself there and follow its rhythm, its wave and flow as you inhale and exhale. Take five more unhurried cycles. Next round or two of breath. Take a slow lift. You can stay pretty low. Walk back towards center and then cat paw your hands in. Slide both of your knees together toward midline. And keep that blanket handy. You can spin it around to cross over the short edge of your mat now and it will serve as cushion for your hips and pelvis. Lean your body forward, rest your hips onto the blankets. Make sure that you're comfortable there and then slide up onto either elbow. We'll take either Sphinx or Seal. For Seal, take your hands out a little bit wider and float your elbows. Also, there's a few options here for your gaze. You can keep your gaze lifted, kind of as neutral or you can allow your head to rest low if you prefer to have traction for your next spine. And remember either elbows down onto the earth or a float sphinx as the first variation or seal as the second option will be three full minutes here. And ensure that you have chosen the variation that allows you to feel that side body length a sensation of space throughout your ribs through your torso the liver is home of your creativity and your intuition and what's really nice is the complementary line the gallbladder is the home of your will to action so the pairing of these two lines is really beautiful it they help us work to create the ideas or plant the seeds, but then also to put them forward into a place of growth. The wood element. Soften your breath. Sustained and sacred stillness. We have one and a half minutes to go here. So at any point throughout the hold, you may adjust to find the edge that works best for you. That may mean dropping back down towards your elbows, or if the edge has gotten a bit too light there, it may mean taking your hands slightly wider and find a float with both elbows. Once again, notice the ebb and flow of your breath. Keep it steady and at the same time unforced. There's a freedom in it. One of the best ways to really work with the liver meridian is through the gallbladder find balance through the gallbladder line so we're really finding some beautiful side body space to help feed that a few more rounds of breath a soft frame of focus and presence onto one ear or the other float your toes with your knees bent and take a windshield wiper in your lower body from side to side neutralize the compression that happens in your low back for that pose we'll take just a couple breaths here and then lower your toes down your hands underneath your shoulders take a slow lift back through table and then 
again. Reach your hips high, back, and upward for downward facing dog. And you'll take your transition for the next shape from here. So you can draw your right knee in toward your heart and then extend it across midline so that you come down to the pinky toe edge. That blanket will still be great as a padding for your outer hip. So you're in this sort of revolved triangle shape in the lower body. You can keep it high, you can rest down to your elbows, or you can come all the way to the earth. When you find your expression, untuck your left toes behind you, and you'll feel this one quite strong. It's going to be edgier for the outer hips. You can rest your palms, land to your elbows, or come all the way to the earth. If you're landing to the earth, remember which ear you're resting onto. You'll want to rest to the opposite ear on the second side. It is an option to bind here. It would be your left hand to your right big toe. If that feels like too much effort or grip, then soften out of that. Your arms might take a cactus shape or come out wide. Find an expression that feels sustainable for about two and a half more minutes. And an alternative here, if this one is too edgy for your body today or for your practice, you can also take swan or sleeping swan pose. You'll get into really similar lines in your body. Smooth your breath like the smooth flow of emotions that comes with healthy liver line. The chi stored here is really important for the vitality of the whole body. Full, even, and unforced breath. resistant, holding on or contracting. Let's see if you can find space for permission to surrender a bit more deeply. Only about one minute to go on this side. Stay present with it, even in the intensity of sensation that may be arising. more full breaths. In the next cycle or two, start to very gently draw your arms in if they're out wide can slide toward cactus arms or plant your palms right under your shoulders. Lift your torso once again up tall. You might tuck your back toes underneath you and float your knee. If it's possible, kind of wiggle your right leg in the deep bend and step your right knee back to meet your left toward a tabletop. Cushion your knees, of course, if you'd like. Take any sort of movement that feels neutralizing here between sides. It could be a little cat cow or some barrel rolls or even resting in tabletop at neutral. And then tuck your toes under, reach your hips high and back. A reset for the opposite side. Bring your gaze forward. Draw your left knee all the way up as if you want to land it between your hands, but then extend your left leg out long so you rest your outer hip. Keep your hands, elbows, shoulders square to the top edge of your mat and either keep your torso lifted, land to elbows or come all the way down to the earth. As you're ready, you can untuck your right toes behind you. And just a few things to remember here. One is you can always take that alternative in swan or sleeping swan if this feels like 
too much intensity in the edge for today's practice. And also you can rest to elbows all the way to the earth or with torso high in this revolved collapsed triangle expression. We'll be three full minutes here, about two and a half to go. Allow your belly to get heavy, your eyes and your jaw to soften. Breathe your weight down into the earth and allow it to support you from underneath. Observe what is coming up in your experience, particularly if there's anything that resembles a sort of anger. This is the liver line being awoken and hopefully ideally drawn into better balance. This a lot of beautiful capacity for creative manifestation when these two lines are working together as a cohesive and balanced unit. Just over one minute left to go. Smooth your way into it. Follow your breath if you notice yourself distracted or mobile internally. bring this shape toward completion over the course of the next two or three breaths. Allow them to be unhurried. And then slide your hands in beneath your shoulders once again. You can lift your torso if you're all the way down to the earth. Slide your left knee in and then step it back to meet your right. Once again, find yourself in tabletop for some a little bit of rebound neutralizing movement. So rolls with your ribs, cat cow. And then land back toward a seat. You'll want to find one of your blocks for this next shape. So have it handy. You can also replace the block if you like a little softer edge with your bolster or with a couple stacked pillows and I'll take that variation today. This pose is really quite edgy for me so I'm going to take a lower and softer expression. So you might rest here with your hips on your bolster or your block or some pillows, knees bent and soles of your feet into the earth as in supported bridge pose. If you're feeling sensation in the fronts of the hips and the front of the torso stay there. Otherwise, work to lengthen out one leg and then the other toward pontoon. And we'll prepare to settle in for four minutes of stillness here. Make sure that your neck spine is comfortable. You can extend the crown of your head toward the back edge of your mat, find a little bit of space and length there. There will be some compression in the low back as this creates a back bend shape. That's part of why it really helps open up the front side of your body. Remember you have the option to walk your feet in bent as well if the sensation is too intense. your breath. This is a pose you can really marinate in for 
as much time as you feel comfortable, as it feels like an edge that supports and serves you. We'll take a slightly longer hold here with a full four minutes. We're about halfway there. Just under two minutes left to go here. Reassess your edge. Also take the time to notice where your mind is at in the practice. And if you need to lasso it back on to your breath as anchor. So, if it feels appropriate, even the fully extended variation of pontoon, you may choose to soften for the last minute by bending into your knees and rest on the soles of your feet. If you're still feeling sensation that's extra juicy and it's really serving you, then stay with your legs out long. already there. Now find the soles of your feet planted onto the earth with knees bent. You can press into all edges of both feet and slide a block or bolster whatever you may have supporting you out from underneath you. If it's with your bolster go ahead and prepare to bring it just underneath your knees. Let your feet land out wide and touch your knees together at midline for a breath or two. And then with bent knees, wag from side to side. Again, you can leave your feet wide. Take a couple windshield wipers. And lastly, draw your knees up and in towards your heart and draw some circles with your kneecaps around in one direction and the other. That feels complete. Lengthen out both legs. Maybe you have your bolster catch the underside of your knees. And settle in for Shavasana. It's the last place to land. And settle in stillness and support of liver and gallbladder, liver the yin line, gallbladder the yang line. As we nourish these lines, we not only feed creativity and intuition, but also perhaps even more importantly, that will to action, the ability to create out of our innate creativity. Soften here.
Take just a few more breaths here. And then start to deepen it and lift it towards your ribs and collarbones. Stretch and spread your fingers, wiggle your toes. Rock your head from side to side. If you'd like, take a full length stretch with your arms up overhead and then draw your knees up and in towards your belly and roll down onto your favorite side. Rest there for a few breaths. And then as you're ready, press up toward a final seat. You can seal your practice in a way that feels meaningful for you. Perhaps it's with hands at heart center, onto your heart or down onto the earth. Thank you each for joining in this liver, gallbladder, and wood element balancing mini yin yoga practice. Have a blessed day. Jai Bhagwan.